In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin this Mass, let us give recognition to the Mass intentions. I invite you all to use this occasion to pray for those names, no? because as we read them, no? we might as well pray for them. No? Adrian, in thanksgiving, Adrian Liao, Audrey Liao, Claire Chen Yu, this is the ninth of nine intentions, Denise Lazaru and family, Modrin Tan, Michael C, Oliver Hoden and family, Shan Xiu, Teresa Pelayo T, St. Jude, and for Lady Fatima. For special intentions for Edgar Pangilinan, Emmanuel Mack, the first of nine, Felomina Narvasa, Geraldine and Joseph, the eighth of nine, James Valente, James Ian, Julie, and John Pangilinan, Michael San Juan, Michael C. Nang Shok Kyok, Ravin and Sharon, Teresita Valente, Victoria Campbell, Vivian Chu, the first of nine, and for the restoration of St. Joseph Church, our church. Of course, we're also praying for our fellow parishioner Jude, who is now in the hospital. They may put a pacemaker on him. They found out just at the eve of New Year, no? Chinese New Year. We also pray for the souls of the faithful departed, Alexander and Mary Tan Pereira, Aloysius and Catherine Pinto, Aloysius Regina Chu, Andy Lo, and Mahelia Pereira, the ninth of 20. Arama, Aramanis and Rosalind Varela, Balbina Francisco, Bertram and Gladys Sea, Bertram Lazaru, Carlos Stephen Fortado, Celine de Silva, de Silva, Clyde and Muriel Jonathan, Florence Lazaru, Guy Moriel, Helen Can Maisio, the three of 52, the third of 52, John and Mary Jonathan, Catherine Tan Go Hoon, Michael Nang, Sebastian Pierre, Veronica Cecilia de Mello, and for all souls in purgatory. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess so to Almighty God, and to, and you, to you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people, to people of, of goodwill. Good 
we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who year by year renew for us the day when this your holy temple was consecrated, hear the prayers of your people and grant that in this place for you there may always be pure worship and for us fullness of redemption through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if a swelling or scab or shiny spot appears on a man's skin, a case of leprosy of the skin is to be suspected. The man must be taken to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests who are his sons. The man is leprous. He is unclean. The priest must declare him unclean. He is suffering from leprosy of the head. A man infected with leprosy must wear his clothing torn and his hair disordered. He must shield his upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as the disease lasts, he must be unclean. And therefore, he must live apart. He must live outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response is, you are my refuge, O Lord, you fill me with the joy of salvation. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Happy the man whose offense is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. O oh, happy the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. But now I have acknowledged my sins. My guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my offense to the Lord. And you, Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Exult, you just. O come. Ring out your joy, all you upright of heart. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do at all, do it for the glory of God. Never do anything offensive to anyone, to Jews or Greeks, or to the Church of God, just as I try to be helpful to everyone at all times, not anxious for my own advantage, but for the advantage of everybody else, so that they may be saved. Take me for your model as I take Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. 
Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course, I want to, he said, be cured. And the leprosy left him at once and he was cured. Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him, mind, you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. It fell on my fortune to have to say and celebrate my first Mass on a day like today, no? where liturgically it is probably one of the most perplexing day to celebrate a Mass because there are many coinciding feasts that fall on the 14th of February, Sunday especially in Singapore and in this particular church. Well, the first thing that comes to mind for most people culturally is that today is Valentine's Day. So it is a celebration of love, no? even for pagans. No? But of course, we all know that this has roots in Christian roots. No? St. Valentine's, if you believe that story. No? of where St. Valentine comes from. But today also being a priest of Abuze and doing my first big mass, public mass, it 
happens to also fall in an, on an important family feast of Opus Dei, of the work, because today is also the feast where the women's section of Opus Dei was begun in 1932. It also coincides with the foundation of the priestly society of the Holy Cross. So it's a double feast for us. No? So as a family feast, it also falls today. Furthermore, today is also the third Sunday of St. Joseph in preparation for St. Joseph's March 19 feast. So we have been celebrating, there's this devotion to pray seven Sundays to prepare for that feast. And then today is also the feast of St. Cyril and Methodius, whose feast falls always on March, on February 14. From the sanctorial perspective, he is, these two priests happen to be the saints that in a way founded the Slavic churches. No? That's why the Cyrillic script no, was actually invented by St. Cyril creators of a culture no? because before that they were usually usually using oral like oral they had no written script but saint cyril gave them you know those that language where there are hardly any vowels no? but on top of that today happens to also be the feast of the dedication of this particular church and it's not just any church now, just any parish no? it happens to be the cathedral the head church of the diocese of Singapore no? and so we happen to be still squatting if you want to use the term we are still here because our church is still under renovation so it fell on our luck to celebrate this Mass in the cathedral. And that is why, as we were preparing for this liturgy, the confusion as to which are we going to celebrate? Is it the, the feast proper of today, which is the sixth Sunday of ordinary time, or the Mass of the dedication of the cathedral? And of course, I had to clarify, of course we have to celebrate the feast. We're the only ones who could celebrate it today here in this church. The others have to celebrate the sixth Sunday of ordinary time you know, because it supersedes. No? But because we are here, we have the privilege of being able to celebrate the Mass. So we did a kind of hybrid. You will see that the collect and the movable parts, we are celebrating the dedication of this cathedral. But for the readings, for pastoral, pastoral reasons, so you can follow, we used the sixth Sunday of ordinary time. You know? But this morning, the, the bishop, the archbishop, William Go, celebrated in full regala even the readings proper of today's feast. You know? And we ask ourselves, why is this so important? Don't we, don't we have the choice? Why don't we just choose whichever one we like better? You know? But, you know, in liturgy, it doesn't work that way. You know? There's a proper way of celebrating how the body of Christ operates in this world. And so that is the first thing I wanted to point out for us, no? that today, as we are celebrating these feasts in the church, as the body of Christ operating in this world, we follow a certain prescription. But that following of the prescription is because we are part of a body, the mystical body of Christ. Sometimes some of you may feel, I, we are in probably in some churches, they will think, oh, we're, we have to celebrate a lower feast because it's only the ordinary Sunday of ordinary time, ordinary, and mm, ordinary, nothing special. Quite the opposite. Indeed, what we have to remember is what we are celebrating is the resurrected body of Christ, which makes it possible for all the other feasts to take on a supernatural, mystical presence and meaning and action. 
indeed today as we come together and this is one of the things we want to emphasize and you will see me emphasizing it more and more and more in the coming times that I will be with you it's for us to understand what does it mean for the church to be liturgical many of us will think it is only ceremonial but liturgical action does involve a ceremony it involves a certain way of doing things in the same way that the queen would have to be enthroned in a very peculiar and specific way because it represents the will of the people in our case we follow the liturgical prescriptions because it is an expression of the will of God expressed through the means that Christ instituted through his church so the actions that we are doing here are not mere actions of men but the action of Christ operating through his body here in this world and that is the actions of the church but I wanted to point out on this beautiful meaning of the liturgical meaning of the church's action in the light also of the fact that when we come together the action of Christ in the world is done through his body but this body has sicknesses it is mired in sin and I would like to connect that precisely with our readings today because suddenly as we are celebrating the cathedral the body of Christ operating in this particular locality and then we the readings for the sixth Sunday of ordinary time talk about leprosy what's the connection <laughs> maybe we can speak of something a little bit more beautiful a little bit more celebratory but then we would miss out the whole point let's understand what leprosy most of you may not be familiar with this particular sickness it is a kind of putrefication of the body where the body is trying to heal itself but cannot quite heal itself you know when we have pus most of us think ah pus the problem is the pus the problem is not the pus the pus is the sign that your body is fighting the bacteria it is somehow managing just enough to overcome but not enough so that the infection keeps going and going so the pus keeps coming out we think of the pus as the problem the pus is the sign of a healing but not quite and that's why it's the person with leprosy and the skin is putrefying it's like you're a walking dead <laughs> you're dying in a way and what is so funny about this in the Old Testament as we were reading in the first reading of today's mass there is the prescription that is given in the book of Leviticus that if you have this disease what should you do you should go to the priests to declare that you have this disease and what does the priest do the priest will declare you unclean it kind of reminds me a little bit of what happened to me actually and probably to anyone who is declared positive now that word is negative <laughs> I'm positive immediately everyone around you will walk away right because that uh, it, when I was in Malaysia I happened to have a well I tested a positive eventually but we were not sure so I was told go and have yourself checked and when we had the test and the doctor called and the first thing the doc doctor said was why did you come to us I said who else will I go to you have to have yourself checked so you go to the clinic to have yourself checked that's what clinics are for I said you should not have come here who else will I go to how else will you have yourself checked so you see in the logic of this 
the limitation precisely of the Old Testament. The Old Testament tells you you have to go to the priest so that you can be declared unclean. And what happens to you when you are unclean? You're supposed to be segregated. That is for the good of the, for the rest of the social body, right? And that is not wrong. You have to be isolated. But you could see the limitation of the Old Testament. It can only try to protect in what it can, which is to isolate. And that's very funny in a way because to, to isolate you, to do you good, is to ostracize you. And this brings us to a problem that we have in society. That at the heart of what we are celebrating as a church is a relationship, a person-to-person -person relationship, a relationship with God. But it's not just with God, it's with the rest of the people of God. And yet the Old Testament can only claim to limit that relationship because you have a sickness. The greatest punishment in the old times, in the ancient times, unlike today when you say capital punishment and immediately what does that mean? That you are executed. It's death. But in the olden times, in the ancient times, they had something worse. And it is in the form of exile. In fact, it is worse because people understood back then that life is not just physical life. It is, it is life in a community. And when your own community pushes you away, exiles you because of a crime or something wrong that you did, it is the worst kind of death because you are like a living dead. In today's world, we are not, this problem is not unknown to us. For we know that in a world where we are very sensitive to social acceptance, to great extent, when we are ostracized, when we are shamed in a cancel culture, or in social media, when we are bullied, when we are ostracized, or by extension, sometimes even medically and culturally, when say, you are unclean, we do not want to touch you. The attitude is very much like the Old Testament. We are stuck in the mentality of the old, which is, you have to protect us. You have to protect us, therefore we push you away. It has no power to cure. Instead, when we read the New Testament, our Lord presents a new approach. And why is it possible for this new approach to be made possible? Because God can cure. God can heal. Our union, our communion with God gives God the power to heal. And that is why we read in the, new, in the gospel of today's Mass, that the lepers were not afraid to come to our Lord. It's, you can imagine the contradiction for every lep leper. No? Trying to come close to our Lord, knowing that they should not. They would commit, the, the crime is on them. They have to declare, I'm a leper, stay away from me. If they don't do it, they commit another sin. No? But you see, those are the three things. Number one, that we are part of a physical body, the mystical body of Christ. It's not just something spiritual. It is a living organism. God has incorporated the baptized into a body politic, into a mystical union in the flesh, your flesh and mine. But it's not enough. There is still the weakness that our Lord came to heal. We are all sinful. We are all in need of healing. And especially in this time when it seems that physical contact seems to be an evil in itself, we raise a higher banner and we say, precisely because society is in need of healing, we need the sacraments. We need liturgy. We need to express not only prayerful piety. We need to act as a church. We need to act 
as a community because this community has the power of Christ. Our Lord, first of all, has to touch the sick man, the leper. But second, the sick man has to want to be healed. These beautiful words, if you want to, Lord, si quis volo, if you want, Lord. And our Lord will answer, volo mundare in Latin. No? Yes, I want to cure you. Be cured. We forget that sometimes it is Christ who wants to heal us. Down not just to the bones, but right down to the root of our sins, which is always in the spirit, in our pride, in our vanity. And that it is not just because we want to, but because Christ wants it. And that is why I, today, it is just a reminder to everyone that we in the church possess the real cure. And we are doing it here and now in this liturgy. I just want to read this little bit of sec this section on the Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium. I just happened to open the book and it combines various elements that describe not only the reality of the mystical body, but the action of this body as performed in liturgy. Our own prayers are very good, very powerful. But the action of the church acting together, as we are doing here in liturgy, is even more powerful. It is especially in the sacred liturgy that our union with the heavenly church is best realized in the liturgy. Through the sacramental signs, the power of the Holy Spirit acts on us, and with community rejoicing, we celebrate together the praise of the divine majesty. When all those of every tribe and tongue and the people and the nation who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ and gathered together into one church glorify in one common song of praise, the one and triune God. When then we celebrate the Eucharistic sacrifice, we are mostly closely united to the worship of the heavenly church when in the fellowship of communion we honor and remember the glorious mary ever virgin saint joseph the holy apostle and martyrs and all the saints and with those words we summarize all these feasts all these reasons for celebrating today in the very church that represents the very caput the head because we're very lucky we happen to be squatting with the bishop's church. And so we are the few church masses, we are the few masses that can truly celebrate liturgically the action of Christ as head because we are in the head church, the cathedral. You know, some people sometimes go around and say, are there other cathedrals in this city? Obviously, they don't know what a cathedral is. Cathedra means precisely chair, and the chair of the head. The Caput Christi. We invite everyone, therefore, today as we end uh, this little homily to describe our feast today. You know, please join us no, with St. Joseph and with St. Joseph community that we are to be the beacon of light you know, for all the world. You know, because do not doubt that the liturgical action that we do today can bring about the transformation and the renewal of the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through, Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, has chosen us as his people to glorify him through our lives. Let us raise our prayers to him, who is the source of our strength, the meaning of our lives, and the true hope of our future. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our Pope Francis, our Archbishop William, and all our priests and religious, that they may continue to serve God's people with dedication, love, and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the Catholics in Singapore, that we may live the vocation we received of our baptism as children of God to build the kingdom of God and spread Jesus' saving message actively in our daily living. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the parishes and other church communities of our archdiocese, that their unity in faith and good works continue to make them good witnesses of God's love for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the members of our cathedral ministries, that their service may inspire them to a prayer-filled life, bringing them closer to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples celebrating the Feast of St. Valentine, that their love for each other may be stable and enduring, like the Father's love for us, regardless of the challenges they face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our worshiping community, that on this, the fourth anniversary of the dedication of our cathedral, God may bless our commitment to be a community that helps to build our archdiocese into a vibrant evangelistic church to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, purify our hearts and strengthen the communion of your church here and throughout the world, so that united and committed in your love, we will become more worthy and effective witnesses of your gospel now and always. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together we will now say together, well, as the Archbishop has indicated to us, the prayer of 200 SG, no? Heavenly Father, your Son commissioned his apostles to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. Our founding missionaries left home and country so that we in Singapore may receive the good news and your loving salvation. Thank you for this gift of faith and for all those who labored to keep it alive and burning these 200 years. Lord Jesus, our faith is in danger of becoming irrelevant because of secularism, materialism, individualism, and relativism. Grant our communities a renewed missionary zeal and courage to proclaim your name and lordship. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, to renew your people with the conviction and courage of our earthly missionaries. We kindle our faith so that we can be beacons of light in a world darkened by sin, hopelessness, and ignorance. Protect us from the snares of the evil one and grant us the grace to remain faithful to you. 
May our families be models of love and unity, our workplaces be sanctuaries for justice and integrity, truth and charity, be taught in our classrooms, parishes live out their mission in communion, the poor, sick and abandoned see the face of God in us, and may peace and harmony reign among peoples of every race, language and religion in our land. Blessed Mother, you were the first disciple and evangelizer to announce Jesus as Savior to the world. Intercede and grant us your maternal guidance and protection as we navigate the uncertain future. Father, may your love and grace ignite our hearts and lead us to launch a new era of faith so that we may once again be a more vibrant, evangelizing, and missionary church. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church.
sacrificial offering always and acceptable to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god to christ our lord for in this visible house that you have left, let us build and where you never cease to show, show favor to the family on pilgrimage to you in this place you wonderfully manifest and accomplish the mystery of your communion with us here you build up for yourself the temple that we are and cause your church spread throughout the world to grow ever more and more as the Lord's own body till she reaches her fullness in the vision of peace, the heavenly city of Jerusalem. And so, with the countless ranks of the blessed in the temple of your glory, we praise you, we bless you, and proclaim your greatness as we acclaim. they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life 
in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare say. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace you grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. 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 Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say, say the word, and, and my soul, soul shall be healed.
As is very customary in many parishes, they like to make the announcements about this time while they held you hostage because you cannot leave yet without the final blessing. But instead, I will invite you to use this time that our Lord is physically inside you, that we extend a little bit as we read the announcement, but you pray for your intentions, but primarily for Christ inside you. It's a good 10 minutes before our Lord finally loses the physical shape of bread. So in the meantime, you can enjoy the announcements. The weekly rosary for Our Lady of Fatima this week is on the 15th of February, Monday, 8 p.m. The details of the Zoom will be there in the, in the Facebook page. Likewise, the rosary devotion to St. Joseph it's also a rosary, but with St. Joseph, no? on Wednesdays, 17th of February at 11 a.m. It's a bit, not in the afternoon, we moved it to the morning because of Ash Wednesday. No? Please share this information to your friends and relatives. The book of devotion on the seven joys and sorrows of St. Joseph is available also outside in the portico. And for those of you who have not yet obtained the copy, it's really a token amount, no? $10 only. But you can give more if you want. I would also like to remind you to please book for the Ash Wednesday Mass. Our Ash Wednesday Mass is on the 17th of February at 6 p.m. No? Also here. The penitential service for Lent is on the Thursday, the 18th of February 2021. No? 
uh, of course there's a need for appointments as in all things in today's world it's just an app it's okay so penitential service means confession so i would encourage everyone to just find a way contact your priest contact anyone we will find a way if you cannot make it on that day the stations of the cross also via zoom it will begin on on the 19th of February at 8 o'clock in the evening. That may have changed. I think that is earlier. Be aware of the announcements if you would like to participate. Right? And finally, the Office of, for the New Evangelization has produced a Lenten reflection, an e-booklet on the theme, The Word, Source of Life. You may download it from their website. There will also be a short video to accompany the reflections, and that will be released on the 31st of January. And anyway, it was already released you know, in the YouTube channel, you know, The Word. So just to go back a little bit to the Stations of the Cross, just be aware of the exact time of the announcement. So it starts on Friday, the 19th of February. They ask us to also bless the oranges, although it's not strictly liturgical, but never mind, it's within the final blessing, so it is liturgical now. If you can all please stand and manifest the oranges that we have given you and any additional ones that you may have brought with you. Our help is in the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. O Lord, hear our prayers. And let our cries come unto you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, we offer you today these oranges because of their sweetness and golden color. They have become for us the symbol of prosperity and happiness. In our home, the offering of this fruit has be also become a sign of kindness and good wishes. In your goodness, pour down your blessing. Upon these oranges which you have created grant that by this invocation of your holy name all of us who will partake of them may receive help of body and protection of soul be prosperous in all kinds of good works and the practice of Christian virtues let us feel in our hearts the sweetness of your love for us to the same Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the mass is ended. Blessings be to God.
Saint Michael, Saint Michael, the Archangel, Archangel defend us in the, in the day, day of battle. battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Brothers and sisters.